Uh, while we're here, I just thought I would talk a little bit about the work that I do. Hi! We're kicking off another weekend and it's like the coldest day of the week so far. We have a high of minus two, just freezing, but that's not stopping us from going out today. We are at Jongno Samga and we're heading to Iksandong, which is like a trendy, hip neighborhood in Seoul. And we've actually never been there before. They've got like Hanok stuff, they've got a lot of cute cafes and restaurants. So we're gonna see what that's all about and probably get some donuts again. Yay! since going freelance is that now I go to the gym first thing in the morning just to get it out of the way and I don't like to work out on a full stomach so instead of my normal toast and eggs I've been drinking coffee in the morning and recently I'm trying out this thing called bulletproof coffee which is coffee with like butter and MCT oil lots of fat so that it keeps you full and energized these bottles though are pretty pricey so I don't know if I'll be keeping up with this long term, but I'm giving it a try. So anyway, I'm gonna drink this and then hit the gym.
So I'm at my mom's place again. As I mentioned, we're moving apartments in March and it's a bit far from my mom. So on weekdays, normally I bring my laptop to her place and then we have lunch together. And then I spend a few hours just working at her dining table just so I could be a bit close to her while I can. And uh, while we're here, I just thought I would talk a little bit about the work that I do. So I am a Korean to English translator. In my last job, I was an in-house translator specializing in e-commerce. So I did websites, um, online stores, more specifically in the fashion, cosmetics, and K-pop categories. And these days I'm trying to branch into web content. So Korean web comics, web novels, and subtitling for shows and movies and things like that. And also on the side, I'm in the middle of translating a book for a family friend. It's a first-hand account of one of the earliest Korean immigrants in America. And I've been asked to translate it into English so that his Korean-American descendants who don't speak any Korean can understand what their grandfather or great-grandfather went through to bring his family over to America. And it's really interesting. I think it holds a lot of historical value, but this man was born in like 1910 or something and his Korean is super old-fashioned um, and very difficult to understand but it's it's a challenge that I am enjoying at the moment and it'll keep me busy for a few months but if I may share some of the struggles as a freelance translator obviously not every project is going to last forever so even as i am working i'm still constantly applying for different freelance positions trying to find more work it's the complete opposite of working in an office like back when i was um, working for a company if i had nothing to do for the whole day it wouldn't matter because i'd still be paid the same amount of money at the end of the month but now i feel like if i'm not working then i'm not earning anything and it just makes me feel really angry anxious and I don't know if this gets any easier but it's it's not a really good feeling <laughs> and that leads me to my second struggle so I am looking for a lot of work I've been you know doing translation tests for a lot of different companies and one thing that's always going to be a bit of a problem is how much I charge for my services because translation rates greatly vary but the thing is, I consider myself completely bilingual. Like I think I have native level proficiency in both English and Korean, and I want to be paid accordingly. But some of these companies, they offer ridiculous rates, like so cheap to the point that I feel like it would be a waste of time to actually go through with the projects. And even though I know I'm just starting out and it's important to gain experience and stuff, I just cannot accept some of these rates. And the problem is that there are plenty of people who are willing to do that work for that amount of money. But what I feel like the clients don't understand is that you don't get the same quality translations if you're going to pay peanuts. So I have been accepted by quite a few companies, but their rates are so low. I've had to turn down some projects and stuff and then you know sometimes it makes me wonder if i'm doing the right thing because now i'm not working and you know like just finding these standards for myself that's kind of um it's troubling sometimes but yeah that's the struggles that i'm going through at least i still got the book and a couple web novels going on and from time to time i still do some of the like cosmetic and fashion translations but those are just like one-time things today's one of those slower days which is why I'm vlogging, but I guess I'm gonna get back to work. <laughs> I am here at Noryangjin to pick up some kopap for lunch. So one of the good things about being a freelancer is that I can travel a bit to pick up good food for lunch since I'm a lot more flexible with my hours. Um, Nick is waiting for me at home and I mentioned this in a previous vlog but Noryangjin has really good street food 
particularly kokbap and I think we've been eating this every week or every other week <coughs> since I became a freelancer it's that good so let's go pick some street food up <coughs> for lunch the air here is really bad of coffee <coughs>나를 위해 연차까지 내준 소중한 친구입니다. 연차까지 냈습니다. <웃음> 우리 이제 어디로 가는 거야? 우리 이제 코인 노래방 가서 아이유 비니를 좀 해볼까? <웃음> 곧 고등학교 때부터 나예요. 노래방 캐리오케 소울메이트. 소울메이트. <웃음>